Okay, we're here again to discuss question three of the first paper of Leaving Cert 2008 Higher Maths. This is question three, and it's the matrix and complex numbers question. The first part is A, and we're given that capital A is the matrix uh, as given there, and we're actually not told what uh, matrix B is but that the multiplication of A and B actually gives 4, 6, 3 and 2. So let's look at the answer. Well, because we're given matrix A and the result obtained when it's multiplied by another matrix B, it's clear that the unknown here is matrix B. We also note that B must be a 2 by 2 matrix as well. So we might as well build up a matrix B with symbols as elements, i.e as given, A, B, C, and D in small letters. So those, that's our unknown, that's our matrix B which we need to find out. So now we can say that A by B is equal to 3512 by A, B, C, D. And of course we've been given the answer as 4632. Now all we need to do is remember how matrices are multiplied. The entries of the resulting matrix are the addition of the pairwise products of the row entries on the left-hand matrix A with the column entries in the right-hand matrix B. This can be represented as follows. A by B equals 3 times A plus 5C, 3 times B plus 5D, A plus 2C, B plus 2D. And, as before, I repeat here, we're given the result, which is 4, 6, 3 and 2. So this results in four linear equations, as each entry on the left-hand side equals the corresponding entry on the right-hand side. Four unique equations in four unknowns means the system, as it is sometimes called, is solvable. We can start, say, with A equals to 3 minus 2C on the second row and first column, and substitute into the first row and first column to get 3 times 3 minus 2 plus 2c plus equals 4, which gives c equal to 5, which means that a equals minus 7. And with the two remaining entries, we get b equal to 2 minus 2d, which when substituted gives 3 times 2 minus 2d plus 5d equals 6, from which we get d equal to 0, in fact, a handy number, and so b equals 2. We may then write out the, the matrix B, which is our requested answer in full, minus 7, 2, 5 and 0. So we move on to que question B, it's in our part B, which is in two parts. The first part, uh, we're given Z a complex number which is 5 over 2 plus i, all minus 1, okay? And we have to express this in the standard complex form and plot it. Okay, now this is a subtraction of a complex number. We prefer not to do division by a complex number, so let's render the denominator as an integer, like so. So we multiply above and below by the denominator, which gives us that. And, happily enough, we see that the denominator turns into 5, and it will cancel with the top, uh, with the 5 on the top and then we have to subtract minus 1, so that simplifies to 2 minus i minus 1, which equals 1 minus i. So that turned out to be quite easy because of the cancellation of the 5s. So 1 minus i is our answer. Let's look at the Argand diagram. We have the, real ac the horizontal axis is the real component, and the vertical axis is the imaginary component, so we can see 1 uh, and minus i being minus 1 on the imaginary component, on the imaginary axis. Okay, let's move on to part 2 of this section. We have to use De Moivre's theorem to evaluate z, six, uh, z to the power of 6. Now, we, we discovered that z is 1 minus i, so this is 1 minus i all to the power of 6. Now, De Moivre's theorem is already given to us in part 3 of the question, so we don't need to use our memories here. It, it's, it's given to us already. There's almost no challenge here in remembering that, except that this complex number must be reduced to polar form. We don't have it in polar form yet. 
we calculate the modulus or absolute value of the number and divide both real and imaginary parts by it to get the root of 2 all multiplied by 1 over the root of 2 minus 1 i over the root of 2. Okay, this isolates r for us from the polar form of r multiplied by cos theta plus i sine theta. Adapting de Morvan's theorem to the case in hand, we can say that z to the power of 6 is 1 minus i to the power of 6. We have to take r, which is the root of 2 to the power of 6, <coughs> and then we can multiply 6 by the theta. Now clearly, root 2 to the power of 6 is 8, and notice how the cosine of a positive angle is the same as the cosine of a negative angle. Okay, we can see that uh, although the minus sign has been transferred on the sine side to the angle, the cos in the cosine case it doesn't matter because minus the angle, mi uh, the cosine of minus an angle is the same as the cosine of plus an angle. It should have been apparent though from the uh, argand diagram that theta is minus 45 degrees or minus pi over 4. Now 6 times this angle is minus 270 degrees, which actually comes around to 90 degrees. This means that cosine of minus 6 theta, the cosine of 90 degrees, uh, is well known 0 in this case. So we get a complex number with no real component, in other words the cosine has been rendered to 0. So the answer is that z to the power of 6 equals 8 times i sine of minus 270 degrees, which is uh, the same as sine of 90 degrees, which is going to be 1. So 8i is the answer. And that concludes the second section. And we go on to the third section, which actually is a proof by induction, okay, which is de Moivre's theorem. Uh, that's why we knew it for the section before. We didn't have to memorize it. And we have to uh, use induction. Now this proof is, is actually part of all mathematics textbooks. It's about just absolutely knowing it or, or not. Uh, with luck, you, you will know it. Okay, I, I'll summarize it here um, by saying that the proof by induction means assuming that the case for n happens to be true. Okay, just on the off chance, n is true. Assume that. And then go about trying to prove that n plus 1, the case for n plus 1, is true. If you succeed, finally you can move to the case of n equal to 0 and prove that, which, is a, which would be a numeric case. And it will mean, finally, that if it's true that uh, the, the de Morvan theorem is true for all n, uh, an element of the natural number set. And that concludes our question number three.